fire this way, fire that way. Fire this way, maybe fire that way. Fire like this. What's up guys, Dan here, Cole Cracker Bushcraft, sitting at our new classroom area after we just finished up our survival class here at the Appalachian Bushman School this past weekend. For everybody who attended, great job. The weather was definitely not the best weather. Well, it was the best weather for class, but not weather that most people wanna go out and camp. There was heavy rains, light rains, mud, hot, humid weather, so everything going on. And during the class, I always, well, all of the classes I love to just observe students do stuff especially after we teach them a variety of skills and then see how they react to it and in the survival class it is very fire intensive we go over fire shelter water and food um, a lot of fire making number one people love it and number two they need a lot of practice generally at it so we taught them a whole bunch of survival skills related to fire and fire creation and in one of the exercises when they get back into camp they set up a shelter and they have to get a campfire going and they are literally the only rules and they have to use the stuff of course they have with them and um, after teaching all these different fire methods I like to watch well which one are they gonna pick and what normally happens is they start digging in their bag and they pick out whichever one they were most successful with now with me saying that most people would probably agree if you had to take a wild guess you'd say yeah that's that would have been what you would have also guessed but here's the thing we as outdoor survivalists and bushcraft crafters and goers, we get trapped in this mindset of we have to do it a certain way. And that is probably the worst mindset you can have in a survival scenario. But here's the thing, there is a ton of different ways to make fire. Like we have matches, we have ferrocerium rods, we have store-bought fire starters like um, wet fires or the Yuko sweet fires. We have barks and inner barks and we have fat wood and all kinds of stuff, right? So generally when we go out and we are recreating or we are are doing some training we say okay today is fair rod and fat wood or we say today we are using a yuko sweet fire and that's all well and great you have to train in that type of fashion but when it actually comes down to making that fire in an emergency or maybe in a situation in which you're misplaced or lost for a little bit and you just got to get that fire going you need to think a little bit outside that box so how do we think outside the box well we're gonna use this stuff as an example. So we have all this different fire creation stuff sitting in front of us, ready to go, okay? So I gotta get a fire going, maybe I fell in a cold lake, maybe I'm trapped somewhere, I need to get that fire going. So probably, okay, we're just gonna say in general terms, most people are gonna have a pretty hard time with the fair rod and gathering something from nature. So they might scratch that. So they might say, well, hey, these Yuko fire starters, they light up and they burn for a little while. They light one and because it's wet and it's raining, the fire's not starting too well, so they just keep burning through these things. Okay. Well, this is where we gotta stop and we gotta think a little bit. So, these sweet fires or a wet fire like this teamed up with a fair rod, either one, they're gonna work really, really well to at least get that initial flame source. But then our job is to grow that. So being able to team things up that we have inside our kit or with us is like a key element here. So let's just say we light one of these and everything's wet. We have fat wood. All that it would take with another 30 seconds to split some of this down. So we have our sweet fires, we place our fat wood on top, we get that burning. But if we even wanna supercharge that, maybe we take some of our bird's nest material we have, we light that with the sweet fire. That turns a sweet fire into a monster flame. Now we have an easier time lighting our fat wood. Now when we put our small damp material on, it just dries out and burns out that much quicker. Nice, easy, and simple. So although you normally you're gonna set up rules for yourself when you're training, the reality is when you're out there in mother nature, no rules apply. However you gotta get that fire going, you get that fire going every single time. Super important. So that's today's video, a little insight after this weekend's class. Now, but before you think outside the box, go over to coldcrackerbushcraft.com, check out our fire starting stuff. Maybe you could pick up some cool stuff for your kit. Always carry multiple stuff, and uh, I think that's about it. So check us out, coldcrackerbushcraft.com. Until next video, stay in the woods.